Hello, this is video number 42 in a series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing with a focus on real-life interpretation and application. I'm Bill Kinney. It's the first video of a sub-series that I'm titling Algebra, Formulas, Functions, and Graphing with an emphasis on spreadsheet usage, part one. Um, that's quite a mouthful, and, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping this, well, it, it's going to be the last sub-series of the overall series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to tie all these things here together in one sub-series, and um, because of that, it, because I'm trying to wrap it up in a sense, it might be a longer sub-series sub -series than the previous ones. The previous ones included uh, a sub-series on the arithmetic of integers, then the arithmetic of rational numbers, or fractions, and then decimals, percentages, and real numbers. And then the fourth one was on exponents and roots. I guess this would be the fifth subseries in the overall series. Um, in the last couple, we haven't focused so much on applications. In this subseries, I'd like to go back and focus on applications. We will get to spreadsheets here, though not right away, because um, I want to lay the foundations before we start using spreadsheets. And here we are really getting to, toward what you might say higher mathematics um, beyond arithmetic. We're looking at ultimately what most mathematicians are interested in is functions, relationships between variables is what we're really after here. I want to try to approach these ideas sort of all at once within specific problems. Um, and in this video, we're going to focus on this problem that you see right here. Instead of doing sort of one topic at a time in a logical sequence, which is a lot of what I've done, I want to kind of, within each video, as much as possible, um, focus on all the concepts in the title in the, of the subseries at once. All right, so that's, what's this problem here? You, you set the cruise control on the highway <clears throat> and go 340 miles in five hours. How fast are you going, and how far can you go in 6 hours and 15 minutes at the same speed? I will use my calculator here to speed some calculations along. The first thing I want to emphasis, emphasize here is, first of all, answering the first question, is how fast are you going? In everything I do here, I hope to use the things that you've learned in the previous sub-series, if you've watched them, to... Um, show their relevance in this new subseries. And the thing that would be relevant here, how fast are you going, is to, well, hopefully you would see intuitively what to do. You know, your, since your distance traveled is given in miles and your time is given in hours, uh, hopefully you see that you would want to take the ratio of those two things, divide them, 340 miles, divided by five hours, and that that will give you your speed in miles per hour. Okay, maybe try that in your head. It's a good, good little exercise, but I will use a calculator here too. 340 divided by five. I made it come out pretty nicely to 68 miles per hour, and you would write it as 68 miles per hour. Okay, so the answer to that first question is not so hard. And the second question is not so hard either. Um, I would encourage you to maybe pause the video and see if you can solve the second question based on this first question. Um, if you've come back now, uh, there's, there's two ways I'd like to think about this second question. Uh, first, I'd like to think of it in, in a way maybe you're not used to thinking of it. I'd like to think of it as something called a proportion, actually. Uh, proportion, the word proportion could just mean fraction, but here I, I mean it to, to mean an equation that we want to solve that is of the form one number divided by another number with units given equals some other fraction, some other fraction in this case, which is also going to have units of miles per hour where the unknown, there's going to be an unknown based on what question I want to answer. How far can you go in 6 hours and 15 minutes? 
x is going to be my unknown. Well, that's the letter we usually use for the unknown. I'm actually going to change that here. I'm going to call it y. It doesn't matter what letter you use, but in the interest of doing something else later, I'm going to call it y. And for the number of hours, I'm going to put 6 hours and 15 minutes. You'd want to convert that to a decimal as 6.25 hours. You could also do it as a, as a fraction. Um, it would be 6 and 1 fourth hours, which would be 25 fourths of an hour. That's a proportion you want to, and you want to solve for the unknown here. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. And the way you'd want to solve for y, which is the unknown here, is you'd want to multiply both sides of this equation by a quantity that's going to cancel with the 6.25 hours on the right, or divide out with it so that it goes away. That goes away with that. And you, you want to think of that as both the numbers 6.25 canceling and the units canceling as well. And it doesn't matter whether one unit is plural and one is not. But you can think of it as both the numbers dividing out and the hours themselves dividing out as well. Canceling, if you will, though I prefer using the word dividing out. Over here, you can cancel the hours. And then just do that multiplication. 340 over 5 is 68, and then you end up doing 68 times 6.25, and that is 425 miles for the final answer. So that's how far you can go at that speed in 6 hours and 15 minutes. Y is 425 miles. Y does have units of miles. You don't have to rewrite them over there. And by the way, you can switch these around. You can say Y equals 425 miles like that too. In the time we have remaining in this particular video, I'd like to um, broaden the perspective here. And I'd like you to I'd like to go back to this proportion here. 340. I won't bother putting the units in now. They are there. 340 miles divided by 5 hours equals y miles. And I'd like to have a second variable, if you will, in this equation for the amount of time, x. Why did I do that? Well, this is 68 miles per hour over there. I'd like to pretend I know what x is, and I'm pretend I don't know what y is. Just use your imagination. Pretend x is known and y is unknown. Based on what we did up here, to solve for the unknown, which is y, I'd multiply both sides of this equation down here by x. It's going to divide out on that side. And I get y equals 68 times x. And it is traditional to not bother putting the dot in there for the multiplication and just write 68x. And it should be understood that that's a multiplication, 68 times x. And I like to look at this equation and say to myself, you know, if x is, I'm pretending in all of this that x is a fixed, but a fixed time, a certain number of hours. But if now I change my perspective and pretend x is an unknown number of hours, this is an equation that defines a relationship that tells me how to take my amount of time that I want to travel at this speed of 68 miles per hour multiply it by 68 to get the distance traveled. It's a formula, y equals 68x, which means y equals 68 times x, that's based on the amount of time that I'm given is going to give me my distance traveled. That's kind of cool. You can plug in any number for x that you want. And I'll end the video by just plugging in something. Plug in any number for x you want. How far are you going to go in 4.87 hours? You're going to go 331.16 miles. 4.87 hours, that's about 4 hours and 52 minutes, a little bit longer. You're going to go 331.16 miles. That formula defines what we call a function that tells us how far we go based on the amount of time we travel. In the next video, we'll graph this function.